Without much further ado, I give you the Derek Zoolander Sinner for Kids Who Can't Read Good. What is this? A center for ants? Warning! You're watching Dr. Todd Lee TV, where theoretically you could learn a bunch of cool shit. Good evening. I am Todd Lee MD, medical doctor, biochemist, IFBB pro bodybuilder, and I am going to teach you the techniques I developed to help me get through medical school and graduate with honors, even though I had untreated ADD. So if it'll work for someone with ADD, It'll work for everyone. You don't go to a Starbucks with your laptop and clickety-clack away with all the noises and shit. That's something some extrovert would do because they can't be alone. We're going to have to teach you some introvert tricks. That's where we excel. Libraries. I remember in medical school, a lot of the girls who failed, they would have study groups and they go to the library to study and they like to, to go to coffee shops and like to drink coffee when they study. And it's like, okay, you're going to take a bunch of caffeine how the fuck are you going to sit still when you're on caffeine? You find a cold, dark place and wear layers so you're not hot and sweaty. That way, if you start getting hot from the layers, you can peel a layer off. You can put a layer on. You want to have complex carbohydrates in your system. You want full food. You know, you don't want to be hungry. You want to be able to go to the bathroom, all that stuff. And you want to have all of these things, all the biological things that could go wrong. You have to ensure that they don't. Make sure you account for everything. Sound. You can set your brain, just like your heart rate, to a certain tempo by choosing the type of music. Some of the bands that I think are best to listen to when you're studying would be Shadow of a Tent, for example, or Within the Ruins, or some band that's very fast technical guitar work but has no vocals. Most of the deathcore bands have vocalist versions of their albums because the words are going to distract you. That's why really fast technical alien deathcore, like Aquapoise, yes, there is a band called Aquapoise. It's not about steroids. It's about spacecraft and shit. So 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off. This is how you study. What I used to do, I do 20 minutes of subject A, a subject I don't like, and when I finish the subject I don't like, I get to do a subject I do like for 20 minutes. And then the third 20-minute period, I get to do something else. Walk my dog. I used to live in a jungle, so it was actually kind of fun. Also, eat. Also, play Call of Duty. And I used to rotate those three things. Each hour has three units. We can call them sets or acts. Act one, a subject you don't like. Act two, a subject you do like. Act three would be a break. And you rotate a walk. With walk your dog and eating and Call of Duty. So over the course of three hours, I've gone through a walk, I've ate, and I've played video games. Over the course of nine hours, I've had three meals. I've walked my dog three times for my 10 minute, you know, 30 steps, and I've played video games three times. And I've managed to study six subjects. So when you read, take your finger and move it along the line. And keep the pace going according to the music. And your eyes have to keep up with that finger. And if it's too fast, listen to slower music. Kind of like cardio. You put the treadmill on at a certain speed. You listen to music that's fast enough to where you can walk on the treadmill. If you don't walk fast enough, you fall off. You don't want to fall off? Turn the speed down on this treadmill, right? If you are like me and you're too old to read a page without your eyes crossing and headaches... Then you use a screen, put on dark mode, take the cursor and your mouse and slide it back and forth. So you would be slowly increasing the speed at which you can read. If you have things to access like book, you take these things called highlighters. You take a yellow, pink, green. You take a yellow highlighter and highlight the things you don't already know. This is key and there's a reason. Highlight all the things you don't know. Then you read it again a day or a week later. So typically, let me give you the whole picture. You got a lecture. The lecture is going to be um, thyroid endocrinology. All right. So you read the uh, the notes that goes along with the video first. 
highlight everything in yellow that you don't already know. So then reread the notes and only read the yellow part. Highlight all the stuff you don't already know in pink. This means you will be overlapping some, but not all of the yellow, because you'll remember some of the shit from when you re read it the first time. Like, I didn't know that highlighted in yellow, but then you know it some of the time. Now you've done it, you went over the material three times. You've done it visually, auditorially, when you watch the video, and visually again, but this time it was active learning because you were seeking out things you didn't know in the yellow and highlighting it pink if it's stuff you didn't know. Now you'll find that some of the shit in black will jump out at you, the black and white stuff, and that'll be pink. So there'll be pink stuff, there'll be yellow stuff, and then there'll be the part that the pink and the yellow overlap, which will turn orange. The third time you read it, the fourth time you're exposed to it, the orange stuff is going to be the shit you focus on. Ready? Highlight it in green. And you're like, I can't really read it. All right, then that's the wrong green. All right? <laughs> so don't keep doing that. If that's a, Then we switch to plan B, which is take a pen and underline it. So you underline the orange stuff that you don't already know. Or if, it, if it's still legible in green, do that. Then the fifth time you read it, you just read the green stuff or the underlined stuff. At this point, you should be able to give a presentation. Set up a camera and give a presentation. And at that point, you should be able to recite the whole thing, not just the green stuff. Now, of the stuff that you missed on the presentation, it's stuff you don't have an active recall. So it's in your head. You're like, oh, I know that. Why did I say? It's not on the tip of your brain. So what you want to do is if you really have to keep studying, if you don't have it down cold at this point, this is when you resort to note cards and you make note cards and you write a question on the front and the answer on the back. And you don't even have to count that as study time. Keep it in your car. And when you're at a red light, just go and just drill through that. Keep it in your cup holder. You know, like when you're on the toilet, go through it. Hole punch that shit, put a ring through it so that you, and you keep that on you. Get cargo shorts. So you keep the fucking note cards in on the ring in your pocket and, you, and your um, cargo shorts. You can pull it out, rip through it all the time. You will get that stuff done cold. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Fusion Regenerative Therapies, where I am the director of human performance. This is the practice in which I practice medicine. I uh, will be able to order you blood work and read your blood work and help you with therapy as needed based upon the results of your blood work. Please click the link to get a consult with me and I can help you optimize your performance. Thank you. All right, the last thing. Insulin is supposed to potentiate neural learning. So in theory, if you have type one diabetes or you have pancreatic insufficiency, then having high, remember I said use complex carbs? High complex carbs, you can use insulin to drive them in a little bit harder. And I'm talking like one or two units, not five, not 10, one or two units. You can take the bucket, the needle, and there's numbers on the goddamn needle, and the numbers correspond to the insulin. So if it's five, it's five units. So you don't use that <laughs> to one unit. Now, you've, you've probably heard that medical students start cocaine or take Adderall. Yeah, they do. You don't have to, though. So if you're in a situation where you have to take tests, then how do you get through a test? What's your test taking strategy? So if it's a multiple choice, you read the stem, the words, you read the question, the answer should come right to you. You should know the answer instantly. And you're like, oh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And then you look down, the Hashimoto's thyroiditis should jump right off the page at you. It's C. Don't pay attention to the shit you learned in normal school. It's not A, B, C, D. On a medical school exam, it's A through Z. It's 26 choices. You don't even have fucking time to read all of the choices, let alone read the stem and read every one of the choices. If you don't know what the fuck it is when you're reading the paragraph, you're fucked. Just Guess and move on. But if you know, you're like, oh, this is Hashimoto's. Look down. The Hashimoto's should jump right off the page at you. That's your answer. Move on. Don't even read the other questions. They intentionally did a trick question, right? And you might catch it. But the point I'm trying to say is it's better to fire and forget and move on than to pontificate when you don't know. If you don't know something, the chances of you getting it right by guessing 
are so low on a, on a multiple choice test, like an A through D test, it's 25% chance. So just guess and move on. If I got to the end of the test and there was additional time, I would then go through and go through the starred ones and spend more time on them. But I would never take more than a second or two for a question. I would just star, move on. Star, C, move on. And you will complete the test and you will get the highest score possible. It's better to get all 800 questions completed and get 700 right than to get only 600 questions completed, even if you got them all right. 100% of 600 is 600. 90% of 800 is 720. So you're going to get way more right if you fire and forget than if you pontificate. If you don't know it, you don't know it. So guess and move on. So case in point, from the top, find a cold, dark place. And this is this is for people who have ADD. So if it works for them, it'll work for you. And this is hardcore enough to work for medical school. So if it'll work for medical school, it'll work for any school. However, every single person I have told this stuff to, and unfortunately, I've never done a video about this. I told it to them individually. Every one of them said that my study techniques were fucking killer. My test taker techniques were fucking killer. And everyone I've ever helped with this shit got like 95th percentile. So they were like B students and I got them to like the A plus level. So this shit works. Make sure that you've had a full, your stomach's full and that you're sticking to complex carbohydrates. You want to avoid using drugs to control your mind. You have to learn discipline. Be a fucking adult. Don't use crutches. No nootropics, no fucking psychiatric meds. Just be a man, fucking knuckle, white knuckle, real life. All right? And then you sit there, you study subject A for 20 minutes that you don't like. Then as a reward, you get to sub study subject B that you do like. Then as a reward, after 20 minutes, you do activity C. And there could be three activities. Eating should be one of them. Some type of exercise should be the other one. And some type of mental entertainment should be the third one. And mental entertainment is a way of, so you're going to you're gonna meet your body's physical needs. You're going to meet your body's physical requirements insofar as exercise, which is a form of de-stressing your mind. It'll help lower cortisol. And then you will have a de-stress of your mind by doing something pleasurable for your mind, you get some dopamine. So this will potentiate the persistence. If you were to sit there for six or seven hours and try to study, you're not going to focus as well as if you use this method. The 20, 20, and 20. And then you rotate them. And then you, so you've got a block that's an A, B, and C. And then you have a whole study session which is three hours because you went through A, B, and C1, A, B, and C2, A, B, and C3. And yeah, you could go A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2, A3, B3, C3. Once you get that shit down, use speed metal, ideally with no lyrics. If it does have lyrics, they should be death growls or screams so your left brain doesn't attach itself to this written word. The verbal part of your brain will distract you from learning because you're trying to read words. You can't read words and listen to lyrics at the same time. It's nonsense. So take your finger and scan that shit or set up a cursor so that it moves at a certain speed in accordance with the BPM of the music you're listening to. A good default to start with would be Shadow of the Tent on one of their instrumental only albums. All of their albums are offered in instrumental only. Or Equipoise, if you like death metal. Equipoise, it's easy to remember because this is a steroid channel. The band's named after a fucking steroid. It's literally death metal on steroids. That's why they called it Equipoise. All right, and you got cursor or finger trick. When you watch the lectures, make sure you watch them on faster than normal. Then it's carbs. You can use insulin, but I'm not responsible if you OD and kill yourself. I'm saying one or two units of insulin pre-study will help. That doesn't mean you should do it. What I'm saying is it's insulin is not a mind-altering substance. It just helps shuttle the carbs where they need to go, and you need to have the carbs go to your brain. Now, some people might resort like on standardized tests. What I found was on standardized tests, they let you bring certain food in with you, like snacks. 
so you don't have to leave. You don't have to leave to eat a meal, but you don't have to leave to eat snacks. So nerds or gummy bears are a great snack. The reason is, is you want something that is straight carb, no fat. All right, that's it. Peace out. <laughs> Hopefully you found this video helpful. All right. May the force be with you. Where the f*** is the pause button? Oh, here it is.